Hi, and thanks for tuning in. Today, we get to ride the 2024 Beta 500 RS Dual Sport Bike. This machine is no stranger to us. The 500 RS is a legitimate and legal dual sport bike that meets every government certification and is licensable in all 50 states. Beyond that, it has capabilities that outgun fully dedicated dirt bikes in many areas. It is the least bottled up of the fully certified 500cc dual sports. Even the KTM and Husky 500s are more stuffed up. This year, there aren't many changes for the Beta dual sport line. The most noticeable one is a change in the name. It's now the Beta 500 RS rather than the 500 RR. For 2024, the RR suffix refers to the dirt only four stroke models that have returned to Beta's lineup. It does, however, make it difficult for Beta dealers to keep all those models on the showroom floor. As in the past, there are four dual sport bikes that look virtually identical. The 500 shares its chassis and most of its motor with a 430, a 390, and a 350. When you ask beta officials why they don't thin down the herd, they say it's like trying to decide which of your children you love most. The more mechanically oriented changes for the 2024 beta include formed radiators to increase the turning sweep from lock to lock, a softer seat, a new front brake hose, new fork settings, new graphics, and a redesigned taillight license plate holder. The 500 RS still has a double overhead cam motor with a six-speed gearbox. The suspension is by Saks, the brakes are Nissan, and the tires are Maxxis. All RS models include a Trailtech Voyager GPS unit with the ability to upload and download trail riding routes. This is one of the very few dual sport bikes that doesn't need anything. Most owners of Austrian dual sport bikes eventually go looking for more power, and that can be difficult. It's not like you can just install a pipe and go racing. The mapping on all street legal bikes is very lean, and the CPUs are supposed to be tamper-proof. We know lots of riders who have managed to jailbreak their ignition systems but the point is that you don't have to do that with the Beta. Apparently, Beta is willing to cut very close with the stock noise and emission settings. So the bike is a little louder than other dual sport bikes, but still very quiet by dirt bike standards. Unlike virtually any other dual sport bike, the Beta has two maps and traction control. Both are available through a little button in front of the fuel filler. There's a sunshine emoji and a rain cloud representing the hard and soft maps. We almost always ran it in the sunshine mode, although it's possible that the mild map and traction control might be helpful in some horrific conditions somewhere.
Riding it is just like riding a real dirt bike. It's 255 pounds without fuel on our scale, and it's reasonably powerful. You still have to understand that this is a trail bike, not a 450 race bike. You can go hill climbing with your dirt bike buddies and not be shamed, but if you think you're going to do hot laps on a motocross course, well, you're going to be discouraged quickly. It doesn't have the hit or the peak power for that. To be fair, if you took a full-blooded motocross bike onto the 500 RS's world of technical trail riding, it would hit too hard, spin too much, overheat quickly, and be a general nightmare. The RS performs its primary task very well. The power delivery is smooth, the torque is excellent, and stalling is rare, although it does happen occasionally. First gear is reasonably low, and the hydraulic clutch has the world's easiest pull. It might even be too easy. It encourages a certain amount of clutch abuse, although we never suffered any long-term ill effects as a result. The bike runs very cool most of the time, and the single radiator fan does its job well, even in slow, nasty canyons where there's no airflow. Likewise, the suspension is great for rocky trails. The slower and the more chaotic, the better. In this area, Beta might have overshot the mark a little. Yes, the suspension is great for extreme rocks, but it's still very soft and will wallow and bottom if you get carried away. Hardcore beta fans seem to have a love-hate relationship with the sax components. On one hand, they will defend the fork and shock passionately, but on the other hand, they have tips and secrets that they quietly pass between each other. There are a certain number of suspension tuners who specialize in sacks, but even they say that the internal surfaces wear quickly. Frequent oil changes seem to be the key. The privately owned betas we have in the shop have very few modifications. The stock seat and peg relationship is a little tight, and Seat Concepts sells a complete seat that's one and a quarter inches taller than stock, which is good for anyone approaching six feet tall. For suspension, we've used Beta's in-house factory suspension service, and we're delighted. Other complaints are all minor. The kickstand is too short, the handlebar switches limit lever positioning, and the fold-up mirrors are great, but can break if given a good hit. The price is $11,799. That's shocking, but it's still less than the Austrian dual sport bikes. We have to keep reminding ourselves that the Beta 500 RS is a bike with blinkers, lights, and full governmental blessing. And it can honk its horn as it passes most pure off-road machines. That's nothing short of amazing, and it raises expectations for all dual sport bikes.
can read more about the Beta 500 RS at dirtbikemagazine.com or check back here at YouTube and hit that like button and the little bell to get notifications about more content coming your way. Also, remember to check us out on social media. Thanks for watching.